Hey guys, and welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'll be going over how to set up bullet penetration. Um, and basically all bullet penetration is, is just being, being able to shoot out a wall and have the bullets go through it. So I have a little demonstration set up here just to kind of show you what it will, uh, or how it will behave when we finish the tutorial. So you can have different material types. So for drywall, for example, if I shoot the drywall, you can see it goes through um, several of them and the bullet hole it shows in the back and then finally it stops once it gets to a certain number of them so you can see let me shoot a straighter line so you can see it stops once it gets to about here um, and that's because every time it goes through a piece of drywall it calculates uh, essentially you know how much of the bullet um, or like how much the bullet should be slowed down until finally it, it stops going because it's it's hit too many walls um, and so for wood, for example, it's a little bit more dense. So if I shoot this, you can see it goes through three of them and then it stops here on this fourth one. You can see it doesn't come out the back. And then likewise, the brick is even more strong. So if I shoot the brick, you can see it goes through one and then it stops here on this second one and doesn't, doesn't come out the back. Um, and it works for longer or more dense walls too. Like if you really want to have something like this where you know, it's really thick, it'll go through, it'll go through, and then you can see it actually landed over here. But if I can hit more than one of these, see it goes in, out, in, out, and then it hits the wall over here. And that's because this uh, this wall right here that I'm shooting has the drywall material on it. But if I were to shoot something else in the world that doesn't have one of our special materials on it that we're gonna make in this tutorial, like this one, you can see it'll just hit this and then it won't come out the back. So it'll just put a bullet hole on it and you know, it, it won't ever go through it. So it's only going to go through the materials that you have set up for it to go through. Okay, so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into it and I can show you guys how to set this up. So first thing, uh, I'm going to be doing this totally from scratch just so you guys won't have any problems following along. So I'm going to launch a new version or a, a new instance of Unreal and I'm on 4.25.1. It probably doesn't really matter too much which version you're on for this tutorial. I don't think it's going to be a big deal either way, but I always recommend being on the one that I'm on or newer. So let's give this a second to launch. And I'm gonna go ahead and move this guy over here. All right, so we wanna select games down here and then hit next. And then I'm just using the first person template just because everybody has access to it. So we'll use this. And then make sure you have with starter content selected over here because that's where we're gonna be getting our materials from. And then make sure you have blueprints blueprint selected up here and then we'll just call this like bullet tutorial and then go ahead and create the project and we'll give this here a second to load but yeah so the idea is that you can have as many materials as you want like I just had three in the little example at the beginning but you could define as many materials as you want and define exactly how bullets you know can go through those types of materials okay so now we have it loaded up here um, we're gonna need to do a little bit of groundwork here before we can get started. So the first thing I want to do is open up the first person character and change it so that he no longer shoots this little ball because if you can see, and I go and I fire, that's really loud. He fires this little sphere. So we don't want that because we wanna use our custom um, firing code. So let's go ahead and click on this guy, <coughs> click on this guy and edit his blueprint. Drag it up here. Alright, so if you look down here at the bottom, there's this code for spawning the projectile. And we want to delete most of this. So the only things we really want to keep here is the montage that it plays. And we can keep the sound as well. So I'm just going to come down here and kind of start deleting stuff. We don't need this. We don't need this. We don't need any of this. And we don't want to spawn the projectile. And we just want to play this sound. So, and we don't want this input touch either and we don't need this little node. Okay, so we don't need this guy either. Okay, so it should look basically like this when you finish. It should just say, when you press it, you play this montage uh, for the mesh, which is the gun, and then it plays a sound. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn this sound down because it's, it's like way too loud. I'm just gonna set the sound to like 0 0.1 and the real. And then we wanna take this and I'm gonna collapse this to its own function. So highlight all of this and then right click and say collapse to function. Kind of drag it over here. And we're just gonna call this handle fire. So this is gonna handle the firing code. 
And this is where we're going to write most of our code for doing the uh, penetration stuff. OK, so double click on this to come inside here. And you can see it just brought over our montage and our play sound. But obviously, what we want to do is set this up so that it does a series of line traces to figure out, like, you know, what are we hitting? And kind of go through this object and then also adding the bullet holes. So it's going to be a pretty long story, but it will definitely be worth it. All right. So before we can really go any further here, uh, we can just test this out real quick. So you can see it's basically doing what it was doing before, but it doesn't actually fire that projectile, which is good. Um, so yeah, so before we can do anything else, we need to get our materials set up, like our wood, our drywall, and our brick. So to do that, let's come back here to the content folder and go to the starter content folder. And then inside of here, we want to go to materials. And so these are the materials that we can kind of choose from. And for this tutorial, I'm going to do kind of what I did before and just use the drywall, the wood, and the brick. So if you open up one of these, I think this M underscore basic wall is the one I used for the drywall. So if you double click and open this up, and you look over here on the left, there is actually an option to set the physics material. Um, so basically what we want to do is make physics materials for each one of these. So for the drywall, for the brick, and for the wood. Uh, and to do that, you can come to the project settings. So if we come up here, and we go to edit, project settings, and then I think it's called surface. Yeah, so if you search for surface at the, type, at the top, um, here is where you can define your custom surfaces. So we want to have one for drywall, and you can make these whatever you want. You don't have to use drywall or wood, obviously. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to create these three as an example. So I'm going to do drywall, wood, and brick. But you, you basically just want to create one of these for um, each type of surface you have in your game. And so maybe, you know, whichever surface that you want to have it affect how the bullet penetrates differently, then you need to have a different surface type for that. So we're going to do drywall, wood, and brick. And then that seems pretty good. And so now we need to come back here and we actually need to create physics materials for each one of these. Um, so before we can come in here and select this from the drop down, we need to actually create one of these. So if we come back here to the content folder and I'm just going to go up one directory and then right click and make a new folder and we'll call this physics um, materials. And so inside of here, we want to right click and I think I don't remember where this is. I think it's under physics probably. Uh, yeah, physical material. So you want to select this and then select this guy for the parent because it's the only option. Hit select. And then we'll call it PM for physics material underscore uh, drywall. And then let's copy this and paste it twice. So one, two. Come on. There we go. And we'll call this one wood. And we'll call this one brick. So if we open up our drywall, we need to come over here to surface type and change it to our drywall that we created. Now, if you don't see these in your dropdown, um, sometimes that happens. You just have to restart Unreal. Sometimes it doesn't pick these up whenever you add them to your project settings. So if you don't see them in the dropdown, just restart Unreal and then they should show up. So we want to select drywall for drywall, and then obviously we want to go to the wood, and we want to select wood, and then we want to go to the brick, and set brick. And so that's just telling this physics material that this is the surface type we want it to be associated with. And then finally, once we have our physical uh, physical material set up, I'm just going to go ahead and file save all real quick. Uh, once we have these set up, we can come back to our material. So this is our basic wall material, which again is the one I'm going to use for the drywall. And over here on the left, Make sure you have this selected. We want to change the physics material to be our PM underscore drywall. And then we want to hit apply and save up here so that it gets saved and applied. And then we want to do the same thing for wood and brick. So I'm going to browse back to this guy and then find a wood material. Uh, I think I might have used this one. So open up whichever material you want to use for the wood. I'm going to use this guy. Change the physics material again to be PM underscore wood this time. Apply and save. And then finally, we want to do the same thing for brick. So find a brick material. 
I'll just use this clay one and then change this to be PM underscore brick, like so. All right, so now we have our materials associated with our physics materials, which are associated with our surfaces. So basically we needed to do this so that when we do a line trace and we hit this material, we'll be able to tell that, oh, this, this material is of type uh, wood or this material is of type brick. And then from that we can determine, you know, how much the bullet or, you know, how much it to stop the bullet basically. Okay, so next uh, I'm just gonna set up a little scene here like I did in my tutorial at the beginning so we have something to shoot at. So I'm just gonna kind of delete these boxes to this guy. And then over here on the left, I'm gonna bring in a cube and then I'm gonna change the scale just so it's a little skinnier. So I'm gonna say like 0 0.1 and then we'll make this, or I'll just scale it this way, make it a little bit taller, something like that, doesn't really matter. And we'll put that here and we'll make a couple of them. Actually, before we do that, let's set the material on it. So change the element zero here to be our basic wall, uh, M underscore basic wall. Cause you remember just to double check, if we look at this one, it's the one that has our drywall physics material on it. So this is our drywall and then we can just copy this. So if you hold down alt and left click and drag, it will make a copy of it. And so let's change this one to our wood. I'm just gonna drag and drop it on there. Wood, and then Alt, drag, and our brick. I think I used this one, right? Yeah, so there's our brick. Okay, and then if you hold down Control and left click each of these, and then hold down Alt and drag, we can kind of copy to make a couple of these. You have to let go and hold down all each time. I'm trying to make at least like seven or eight. Okay, so that should be good. So the next thing we want to do is start setting up our line trace. So if we come back to our first person character and we are inside of our handle fire event, um, the first thing you want to do is keep track of or set up a variable to keep track of kind of like the strength of our bullet would be a good way to think about it. And each time it goes through a wall, the strength of the bullet goes down um, because it's hitting the wall, right? So I'm gonna create a little local variable over here called bullet strength. And we're gonna set this to be a float. And then we're gonna drag this in and set it to one by default. So it's gonna start out at one, and then every time it hits a wall, it's gonna go down by some value, depending on the surface that it hits. And then once it gets to zero, we're gonna say, okay, the, the bullet is now, you know, quote unquote dead, or it's, it's stopped inside of the wall and it should no longer continue. So this is what we're gonna be using to track that. So then we play the montage, which is just the animation, and then we play the little sound effect. And then from there, we wanna start doing our line traces. Now, we're going to be doing a line trace from the camera directly into the world. So we want to make sure that we ignore our player so that we don't accidentally hit our player. So to do that, we're going to set up a little array here to specify anything that we don't want the line trace to hit. And we're going to be ending up using that later because obviously when you go through a wall, you don't want to hit it again. So we're going to keep adding to that list as it goes on. So let's make a little, uh, another variable over here, a, a local variable and we'll call it the ignore list. And up here, we're gonna change this to an actor, actor object reference, and then to the right, hit this little drop down and select array to change it to an array. And if we drag this in, we wanna say add, and the actor, of course, that we're gonna be adding is our self, which is the player. So let's just right click and say get ref to self. So we're basically just telling it, because um, we're gonna we're gonna be passing this array to the line trace. We're basically just telling it, hey, don't, you know, don't don't hit the player. Obviously, don't don't shoot yourself. <laughs> All right. So then we have our ignore list, and then we want to make um, three more variables over here that's gonna help us out with the line trace. So make another local variable, and we want to change this to be a vector, and we want it to be just a normal single variable, so just like that, and we'll call this the trace start 
and then let's duplicate this and we'll call it trace end and then let's duplicate that once more and we'll call it the trace duration or sorry trace direction like so okay so the trace start like I said before is going to be the camera's location so let's just drag this guy in and say set and then let's right click or actually let's drag in our first person camera and say get world location because remember we're starting from the world location of the camera so that's our starting point something like this and then our direction is going to be the camera's forward vector so we can say get forward vector and we'll drag in our trace direction and hit set this up like so and then our end our trace end we can drag this in is basically going to be our starting location plus the direction we want to trace in times some very large numbers so that way we're tracing very far into the scene so let's hook this up and then we can do just that so we'll drag in our start and we'll say vector plus vector and we want it to be our trace direction and we want to do a float times vector or vector times float and then whatever you put here is basically the distance that the line trace is going to go so you just want to put some very large number here uh, like 100,000 or a million doesn't really matter um, this is just you know trace infinitely into the scene basically and so that's going to be our end spot because obviously we're going to hit something before we get there anyways or we're just going to hit nothing or retreating up at the sky all right so now we have our starting location our direction and our end location for our trace So now we can actually perform the line trace. So we'll say line trace by channel. And we'll hook this up. So our start is of course gonna be our trace start. So we'll just drag that in. And our end is gonna be our end. Trace channel is good to be visibility. Um, you might wanna select this trace complex in your game if you want complex collision detection for bullets. Like if you're trying to shoot uh, skeletal meshes for example then you'll want to check this uh, for right now I'm just gonna leave it unchecked because I don't need it in my tutorial uh, the actors to ignore is gonna be our ignore list that we set up earlier uh, if you remember the only thing we have added to it so far is just ourselves so we're saying hey don't shoot the player and we're gonna set this draw debug thing to for duration just so we can kind of see what's going on and yeah so let's go ahead and give this a quick test real quick so we come back here and hit play and then we fire you can see it is doing something is drawing this line um, but it's not really going towards the cursor as you can see or the crosshair it's like slightly above the crosshair and to the left and that's because for whatever reason unreal or epic decided to not put the crosshair in the middle of the screen i don't really know why so we can go ahead and fix that real quick so let's come back here and go to the content folder and search for hud so this is the player's hud that it's using by default and inside of here we want to change just a little bit of the math so you can see it's actually taking um, half of the screen size right here and then it's like randomly adding 20 to it and then <laughs> it's not even centering it in the middle at all so we just want to delete this and instead of doing that we want to do a int minus so we'll say int minus uh, int minus integer and we want to do this because if you look it's drawing this texture and this the size of the texture is 16 by 16 and it draws the it draws it from the top left corner of the texture so we actually need to subtract 8 which is half of 16 obviously from each of these so that the crosshair will be drawn in the middle and again why this isn't like the thing by default i don't know really it doesn't really make sense to me but that's just the way it is okay so now if we come back here and we hit play and we fire you can see the line trace is coming directly out of the center of our gun or our screen and going to the exact center of our crosshair which is good but obviously it's not going to go through any of these services yet because we haven't set any of this up it's just hitting this uh, first one and then it's stopping so we'll set that up in part two of this tutorial so i'll see you guys in part two